Sometimes when we get caught up in the moments of our lives or the chaos or just the busyness of the day, we forget all the reasons that we have to not only worship God, but to have joy and complete joy because of who he is and what he says. So we're going to kind of dive into that today. I pray it blesses you. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? Or have you been in a season where it feels like he's completely silent? Have you been praying for a way to learn how to hear his voice more clearly? Hey friends, I'm Rachel, host of the Hearing Jesus podcast. If you are ready to grow in your faith and to confidently step into your identity in Christ, then join me as we dig deep into God's word so you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. I pray this series on hearing God's voice is helping you grow spiritually. If you'd like to dive a little bit deeper, I want to let you know that I have created some extra resources for you. On our Patreon page, I have daily journaling prompts to help you move this information from your head into your heart. For me, journaling is one of those ways that helps me really understand how to integrate what I'm learning into my everyday life. Many people use their journaling prompts as part of their daily devotions or even as discussion questions with their family. In addition to the journaling prompts, we also have ad-free episodes, contemplative prayers, bonus content, and more. All of that starts for just $5 a month, and you can find the link in today's show notes. Hey friends, I'm your host, Rachel Grohl. Welcome to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. Today we are continuing our discussion on celebration and joy as a spiritual discipline. And if you didn't listen to yesterday, I would encourage you to go back and listen to it. We talked a little bit about what joy actually is, and it's actually a symptom. It's not necessarily something we can seek, but it is something that we can be intentional about making sure our hearts are lined up rightly with the Lord so that we can experience joy. Scripture tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. That's found in Nehemiah chapter 8. And in ancient Israel, what we would see is three times a year, they would come together to just celebrate the goodness of God. And so these were essentially just joy festivals, really just like a holiday, but um, kind of amped up. They were experiences that gave them the strength and the unity as a people to continue going. And I think that's something that we forget about in our culture. So today what I wanted to do is I want to spend some time just meditating on a psalm. It's a psalm of David, Psalm 103, for us to just let it sink in. Because what I talked about yesterday was joy is a symptom of spiritual health. It's not um, an attitude. It's not you know, just a happy-go-lucky feeling. It's really a symptom of an internal sense of um, health in our spiritual lives. So um, Psalm 103 does a good job, I think, of reminding us of the reasons why we can have joy in the Lord and the, the things that we, despite whatever's going on in our lives, the things that we can hone in on to remind us of God's goodness. And we're going to read through that and I'm going to pray over you. Psalm 3. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord were righteous and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. 
as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembered that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the fields. The wind blows over it and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord. All his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. I'm going to go back up and I want to talk through this a little bit before I pray. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. We're starting with praise. Because regardless of where we're at, we can recognize this God of the universe has come down to earth to make himself known in his holiness. He still seeks us out. We can praise him for that. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And then what it does, it goes through and it lists these benefits that I think sometimes we we take for granted or sometimes we forget or sometimes as we get busy in the day to day, we can lose sight of some of these things. First and foremost, who forgives all your sins. Friend, let me tell you something. There's nothing that you've done that he won't forgive. If you're listening to this podcast, if you're seeking him out, there's nothing that you've done that he won't forgive. The only thing that he can't forgive is your lack of asking him for forgiveness. Like if you don't come to him, if you don't recognize he is God and that he can forgive you, then he can't forgive that. But all of the things that you hold on to, all of the things that you think that nobody knows, even those things, he can forgive. He heals all your diseases. And while you may say, you know, what, I'm not healed yet and I've been praying for healing. Friend, sometimes God heals us this side of heaven and sometimes God heals us on the other side of heaven. And and the thing that I've learned over the years is God's timeline is not our timeline. But he is the healer. We will be restored in perfect health when we walk with him in heaven. He redeems your life from the pit. And he crowns you with love and compassion. It is him. It is it is God himself who offers us redemption from the things that we deserve. We deserve life in the pit. To be perfectly honest, we've all sinned. We Just one sin separates us from God. So we all deserve this place of guilt. And yet, as a substitution for us, Jesus laid down his life, being fully God and fully man. And he took on that sin for us. And and then the crown that he deserved, he bestows to us with love and compassion. You know, one of the reasons that Jesus was so attractive in his day was because of the way that he loved people. He loved them where they were at. Now, it's not that he excused and looked away from their sin. In fact, he called it out. But he did it through this context of love. My name's Preston Sprinkle, and I host the Theology in the Raw podcast. Theology in the Raw aims to help believers to think Christianly about theological and cultural issues by engaging in curious conversations with a diverse range of thoughtful people. I have conversations with a wide range of different guests who come from different perspectives, and no topic is off limits. Sexuality, abortion, politics, LGBTQ, warfare, violence, marijuana, immigration, you name it. If you have a theological or cultural issue that you have been wrestling with, with over 1,100 episodes, we've probably talked about it on Theology in Raw. Along with conversations with various people, I also address questions sent in from my audience every month. And occasionally, I will talk about some of my latest research projects that I'm currently working on. Theology in Raw is not for everyone. It is uncut, uncensored, and I don't give trigger warnings. So check out Theology in Raw through your favorite podcast app. 
Hi, I'm Haven, and as long as I can remember, I have had different curiosities and thoughts and ideas that I like to explore, usually with a girlfriend over a matcha latte, but then when I had kids, I just didn't have the same time that I did before for the one-on-ones that I crave, so I started Haven the podcast. It's a safe space for curiosity and conversation. And we talk about everything from relationships to parenting to friendships to even your view of yourself. And we don't have answers or solutions, but I think the power is actually in the questions. So I'd love for you to join me, Haven the podcast. And see, I believe, I believe in that model now. If you don't know somebody, if you don't have a relationship with somebody, it's really hard to help them walk out of their sin. And yet coming alongside of them in love and speaking them to them out of love and compassion, that's what helps draw people out of their sin. And really our goal is to point people to Jesus. He's the one that is responsible for, for dealing with their sin. It's not on us. Yes, and of course, we want to offer accountability and all those kinds of things, but we're not God. We can't change them. All we can do is we can point them to Jesus. We can get them closer to God. Verse 5, it says, Who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. See, Sometimes people take this out of context, and it's always dangerous to take a passage or a verse of scripture out of context. We want to read it within the context of of the way it was originally written. But when it talks about satisfying your desires with good things, elsewhere in scripture, it talks about how God gives us the desires of our heart. And if I just desire a new car, of course, you know, maybe that's going to happen. Maybe it's not. But instead, I think it's talking about the desires of the things that are in line with, with God's will. And we can talk about that. Sometimes it might mean a new car, especially if you're using it for ministry. I've seen that happen before. But but usually what it is, is, is there are specific desires. When it says God gives you the desires of your heart, I believe he places them there. He places them there so that when he fulfills them, he gets the glory. And he satisfies those desires with good things. The Lord works righteousness and justice for the oppressed. Sometimes we see that on our timeline, sometimes we don't, but be assured that he is working behind the scenes. And maybe the answer to that is Jesus. Maybe the answer isn't justice for all the oppressed. Maybe maybe that's not that all the, the persecutors are in jail. Maybe instead it's the healing and the forgiveness and the freedom and the chains broken that come because of Jesus. He made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. Now, remember, this is David writing this. So this is before the New Testament. And so he's using the example of God's characteristic and his nature of making himself known, making his ways known, making the things that he wanted the people to do known. And God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And so the things that are revealed in the Old Testament, the things that are revealed before Jesus, reveal aspects of the nature and character of God. And so if he made his ways known, if he made his deeds known to to the people of Israel, he will also do that for us. That's the whole point of, of the hearing Jesus ministry is helping us to understand those things that he's making known. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse nor will he harbor his anger forever. I think sometimes when we are in sin, we are deliberately sinning or we're caught up in sin. It does feel like God can be angry or distant from us. But yet the moment we come to him, he's right there. He forgives us so quickly because he longs for that relationship with us. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. Iniquities is another word for sin. But regardless of the fact that we deserve death, we deserve hell, we deserve the consequence, the natural consequence, the spiritual consequence of our sin, regardless of that, he does not give us what we deserve or repay us according to our sin. He doesn't hand us over to that. Instead, he exchanges our sentence for his own. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. 
I love this part. It talks about as far as the east is from the west. If you were to take your hands, one pointing east and one pointing west, and and imagine lines going out from them, they're never going to meet. That's how far he has removed our sin from us. So far he has removed our transgressions. Remember, transgressions mean sin. He has removed them from us. As a father has compassion on his children, the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. We recognize that God is a good father and he has compassion on us as our children in our struggle, in our heartache, in our brokenness, in our sin. He pursues us as the good father that he is. He knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. And yet we we still have this opportunity to come to him, the God of the universe. Mere dust we are. It says the life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. We are nothing when it when it comes to comparison with God, but yet we have access to him. And he speaks to us. The wind blows over it and it's gone and it it, the place remembers it no more, but from everlasting to everlasting. That's forever, guys. The Lord's love is with those who fear him, his righteousness and their children's children. This is a legacy of faith. The Lord's love is with those who fear him from everlasting to everlasting. That's forever. There's nothing you can do that will take God's love away from you. Do you hear me? Nothing. There's nothing you can do that will take God's love away from you. There's a promise here, too. His righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. Our obedience and our covenant with God, we can see generationally. And it's not because we force them to go to church. It's because we modeled for them a way to have a real relationship with Jesus. That's a legacy of faith. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise you, the Lord, you, his angels, the mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you, his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. God, thank you so much for the opportunity to to look at this Psalm of David and to pray over my friends. Lord God, I pray that you would help these words permeate their heart, permeate their spirit and their soul as they come to know who you are in your love and your compassion. In Jesus' name we pray. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you in your walk with God, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, bonus content, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you. Know that you are so loved. Keep going.